Okay, ladies and gents, welcome. We have some mid-elo action here. And if you had to guess why I decided to cast this game, go ahead and, and leave a comment. Because there's only one reason I decided to join this. I That's not exactly true, actually. I did really want to cast Coastal Forest. But when I saw Red's name, I just thought, ironically, the type of person to cry when... Where's the button? Happens would be the person who would name themselves this. We have Don't Cry Happens against Benny21. Uh, Benny21 is the higher ranked player, okay? So 700 ELO versus 600 ELO, bit of a gap between them. However, it's Coastal Forest. The players are very close, and the majority of players don't have a lot of experience on Coastal Forest. You've got a wood line in the middle, like to the north. It's always to the north, by the way. The TCs are always in these positions. So the players are always towards the south, woods more towards the middle, and then you have the water to the north. So if you wish to, you can take the fish. Uh, otherwise, you could be aggressive and probably find your opponent close by. Uh, but Celts, I I'd said in the cast prior to this, which won't hit YouTube because it was kind of a wash, I think Celts can be good on this map because Celt Siege can destroy buildings very quickly. Uh, Celt Infantry is fast and feudal, right? So, like, having Siege on this hill could be devastating, and as Huang so famously put it, you could just eat their TC and win the game, right? Ranks could be good because you have the Forge bonus, you have the Berry bonus, you have Great Knights, you have cheap castles. Like, Franks have bonuses, which do make sense, of course. But let's see how this game goes, shall we? Let's see. Um, so far, everything on food for blue. Red paid four houses there at the start and is scouting out around the map. The other thing you can do on this map, if you really wish to, is you could try and steal their resources. Boars will be on the front... Uh, sheep and goats will be on the front, but these guys are being pretty nice about it so far. So. How does the game censor all kinds of harmless chat and yet that name flies right by? I don't know. Maybe Red figured out the system where he could put the period in front of his name and simply replace the the I with the exclamation mark. But I've I've given up, Tom, trying to understand the chat filter this game has. It's pretty clear to me that it does not work properly and they should definitely have it as a yes or no option in the first place but it's an easy way like think about it from a company's perspective if you wanted to have actual live moderation you'd probably have to pay employees and ugh, paying people's the worst right so instead they probably just had this copy paste and say you can't say these thousand words and put it in still don't fully understand it because i said gg yesterday and it it muted that so, I don't know, maybe it's Microsoft's initiative to not really allow people to be kind to each other and say GG, but I think it's just bugged. It is funny, though, that this guy's gotten right around the system. I don't have an issue with the name, personally. I don't think it's that bad. I did see a name in my Loey the Legend list, though, when I was looking through live games earlier, that was very much not one that should have been cool. It is possible that maybe it doesn't stop them from playing ranked games, however, and it, like, mutes their name. It was bad enough where I'm not going to say it. Let's put it that way. And no, we don't need any guesses. So, Don't Cry over here actually has the lead. Now, what I wasn't able to see about their uh, situations as players is how many games they have. Uh, so, you know, maybe Red has 100 games and a 630 ELO. Maybe Blue's 720 ELO after 10 games, right? Uh, sometimes you need to play a few games to really get a feel where you're actually at. But it also could be that Blue's a more consistent player in the long term. The Franks do have bonuses that apply nicely throughout the rest of the game. So we'll see. Hmm. They could add a paid option to not have a chat filter. No, no, no. Shouldn't add a, a paid option for that, right? <laughs> the, the, the filter is RNG based. <laughs> It's like monk conversions. <laughs> sometimes the conversion comes in really fast, and sometimes it takes forever to come in. That's kind of funny. Can we talk about Red's strategy of zero lumber camps here? Look at this guy. He's got every single villager on food. Oh, man, that mining camp is pretty far away from the gold. Okay, going to gold now. Now he's 100 wood away from a lumber camp. It's very sad. You're Celts, bro. Your Celts, your, your Dark Age eco bonus is you chop wood faster. It's an underrated eco bonus. But hey, everybody gets to do something different. We've got deer. We've got goats. We've got boar. Welcome to the party. 
And over on the right side, we've got a little bit of gold. Next to that, we've got some chips and salsa. Please make yourself at home over here at Red's base. I guess Red's plan is to maybe chop these trees to get the wood. Oh, God. Red's going to hit a point where Red... Is he going to click Feudal Age without a lumber camp? Maybe he will. I don't know. Anyways, over on this side, we have more of a standard buildup for blue. Blue taking a variety of resources. That wood can be used for military buildings, houses, farms, everything. And red, your username is about to be somewhat relevant here because you might try and cry here in a second. He wants to create lots of bills and now won't have a house. And whoa, realized it. And is now going to chop the trees. Okay. I could have so many villagers chopping straggler trees. Holy cow. The, the problem here, guys, because actually the resources collected hasn't been that bad for red. It's been on par with blue. The problem is, this is going to arrive to a point where so many villagers don't have a good job. So your economy was great until it wasn't. It was a short-term economy. Okay, now will we make a lumber camp, maybe? Because then maybe there's some efficiency. And then maybe I'm kind of okay with this. What's the scouting look like for Red? Did scout the big forest. Okay. Oh, boy. All the villagers are walking. And But wait a second. Where are these fills going? They're going to make a lumber camp. Okay, I don't mind it. Red seems to really hate the straggler trees. Not the first time I've seen that at low elo. Red's uptime is really solid. And then blue is... No, this video isn't frozen. Is ah, is gonna click up to feudal age eventually. There we go. Okay, I needed to just hold on there a little bit longer. Sheesh. All right. So red now in feudal age. What's the plan? Going to stone now. We have zero on food. Zero. And enough wood to make one farm. Forgot to make a house. The economy is very messy right now. But hey, we got horse color coming in. We're going to have some farms and not bad. Red continues to impress me. It's very hard to predict the way Red's going to play this game. But and Red's going to queue up more vills. And has forgotten that a house is needed for now. Oh boy. Okay, Blue. Blue, clearly a fan of my content. Placing some farms pretty far away from some resources. But hey, it is farms. It's more farms than uh, Red's going to have. It is a little sad when you're Franks and you make Dark Age farms because you don't get, you know, horse collar, which is something you get for free with them. But it's still farms. It's still food income. It's still good for you. Nice and healthy stuff. What's the scouting look like for Blue here? Blue has not located the enemy. Might have an idea. By the way, I just realized that Red didn't take the berries at all. And now Red can't produce fills because of the house. Let's see. You realize this, Red? Oh, well, we got houses over here. Okay, I missed it. Blue might make some army, which would be bad for Red. This, this video, by the way, this cast, is a perfect example of why you don't want to chop straggler trees before lumber camp, by the way. Because now, Red's at a point where he's got all this wood, and he needs to build farms, but the only villagers he has on wood are the villagers that wandered really far away from his base. So ideally, what you want is in Dark Age, you have the four or so on wood, so you're banking up wood. Then you finish your boars, and then you just put the villas on straggler trees. And then every time you get enough wood for a farm, you pull them off the straggler trees and place a farm. So the villagers are working and they're close by. And then you can spend that wood on the farms. Now he's in like forever banking wood territory unless he wants to maybe make some a mill here and make some farms. So we'll see. I'm beginning to get a little concerned here for red. Because blue has consistent food income from the farms. This isn't that pretty. And that happens, I suppose, but it feels like the potential for army is going to be there for Benny. Hmm. Uh, hi, Tristan. Hope you're having a good day. Thank you. Hope you're having a good day as well. I'm doing pretty good. First stream I've had in a while. Glad to be back. 
still going to be relaxing a bit over the next couple days. Um, I still got to decide what I'm doing this weekend, though. But yeah, my plan... Actually, that, that's not necessarily true. I'll actually be streaming a lot. I, I'm spending a bit more time just recording YouTube videos this week before April's a bit busier. But come to think of it, it is the 28th of March right now, so... I think tomorrow's maybe a day off for me. Thursday, I play a tournament. Friday's community games. So we're kind of back in business. And holy scouts for blue. I mean, if blue can make the houses again. And red is going to try and wall this up. Hmm. Okay. If the food and the wood count was, were swapped right now for red, it'd be really good. And red's going to go, Supplies! All right, supplies. Cheaper militia line. You are Celts. Celts have a strong militia line. Again, food becomes the issue, but we will also have a spearman behind that. Good to see. Good to see. <laughs> T90 endorsing straggler trees. What am I listening to? No, no, no. This is a bit late. I never said you shouldn't take straggler trees. I said you should never have all your villagers on the straggler trees without a lumber camp. Taking stragglers late dark age, early feudal is very necessary and very helpful. Uh, I hope my explanation helped a little bit, all jokes aside, because I think if Red listens to my advice there, I think Red will be in a better position with food count at this stage of the game. Oh, man. Okay. Red loses the scalp, but the spearman's here to tell a tale. He's like, hey, get poked. And it only kills one scout. And there's going to be more scouts on the way for blue as well. Blue is still behind in villagers. Resources collected will probably be interesting here. Food counts pulling ahead for blue. Red still collected so much more. And like, the food eco is lacking, but the stone and gold counts high, the wood counts high. There's spearmen out, which could defend from the scouts. I don't know how good blue's micro is too. It's very possible blue will run into the town center or just run into the spearmen. It's the 29th, you mad? I, I suppose that's true. It's the 29th for some people watching. My bad. How inconsiderate of me. Hmm. Oh, God. Red's going to wall this way as well. Okay. Red going to wall the backside. Worried of maybe a sneak attack at some point. Here come the scouts from blue. Let's see. Red's reaction time. And blue is clicked to the farm. So he kind of gave Red a heads up. That can happen sometimes when you patrol. Let's just give Blue the benefit of the doubt and say that was the game's fault. The town bell has been rung. But these villagers are too far away for the town bell to really work. And unfortunately for Red, we are going to see uh, quite a few losses there. But Red's not going to cry because it happens, right? It's just part of life. So, no crying from Red. Red continuing to play. The speedy Celt Spearmen are here to defend, and BAM! That's right, this is what we call recovery. That villager won't die. He's not gonna die. Boom! Now, Blue's probably like, crap, that's a lot of Spearmen. What do I do against Spearmen? Because some people who play Franks, they win with the Scout Rush and the Night Rush, and if that doesn't work, they don't know what to do. Franks do have some options, but... Blue's economy, I mean, really could use a lumber camp on the main wood line. These villagers don't have a job right now. They're just wandering, standing around, looking at each other. And we're going to see a couple buildings go up. Blue will head to Castlage. This is giving Red time to wall up. And I think Red will be fully walled by then, guys. Yeah, this is a full wall, so that will work. I have to assume that Red's going to notice this and extend the walls to the water. This is a good game. This is a really good game. I, I went in here because I wanted Coastal Forest and I saw Red's name and said, like, why not, right? I think Blue might struggle to break Red if Red has those walls down. So anyways, a couple basic things here Blue needs to do. A couple blacksmith upgrades would be good. Refreshing lumber camps because... If one thing triggers me while casting low elo games, it is really just the wood efficiency. <laughs> As I'm sure you guys have realized watching my content over the years. Red, for all the struggles that have happened here, has done a better job creating villagers. And if you're a player who struggles with getting up to Castle Age on time because you, you've got some imbalances with your economy, fortifications are the way to do it. 
because the faster Castle Age player can't use their Castle Age all that effectively if you have walls. And this, again, will be fully walled by red. Very thorough job. Red could be raiding with Spearman right now. Wouldn't do it if your base is open, but it's a possibility. Hmm. Wouldn't it be something else, though, if Blue, who's now making a new Lumber Camp, would somehow chop through here? He's not that far away from it. It would still take quite a while, but the potential's there. Villagers are probably going to chop through these trees first. Again, that Lumber Camp. I mean, I've got big trees on. I'm still not loving that Lumber Camp. Would prefer it be here. If someone says the Lumberjacks are more fit because they walk longer. Yep, if that's true. They are pretty shredded. I don't know how they get that buff when they're just doing so much cardio. And beyond the boars that they maybe ate in Dark Age, don't even see them eat. This game is so unrealistic, man. <laughs> that's, that's my issue with realism with the game, is that the villagers are too buff. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Got a barracks. We've got a barracks. We've got a mill. A little confused exactly what Red's plan is here. But Red is on the way to Castle Age. Red should have enough stone to make a castle when in the Castle Age. And Red will have enough wood to blast him the entire game. Also, this is the third Coastal Forest game we've seen today. And I'm pretty sure the relics are always just extremely imbalanced. There might be some level of consistency and that there's always one in the middle chunk of wood. Sometimes it's actually impossible to access. But I mean, these relics are far from fair, right? The other one we saw earlier today had all five relics on the left side. So just keep that in mind if you're playing this map. And what's Blue going to do? Blue's going to make knights. Was he up against Spearman? Yes. Are Spearman kind of a counter? Yeah, in some ways. But Blue knows Franks and Blue knows knights. And that's exactly what Blue's doing. But knights with upgrades kill Spearman. No problem. I mean, Pikeman, you have to think a little bit more about the engagement, but... This is the beauty of, of playing Franks, right? You just can keep it simple and still get away with it. Um, we'll depend on the timing here, I think. And Blue's going to need a few more houses. Heard the house noise. And I don't know who's going to build those houses, but somebody will eventually. Oh, she will. Okay. Can Blue see the walls? Okay, Blue can see that wall and this wall. Okay, because, yeah, the scout died there. Makes sense. Dang, man. So a couple fishing ships here for Red as well. Red has played this really solid. Seems like the longer the game goes, the better Red gets. First thing I would want to do is I'd want to click Pikeman here with these resources. We see the uh, handcart upgrade. We see the farm upgrade now. We see the wood upgrade. Okay, the gold upgrade. All the upgrades. There's not many knights here, so a lot of the scouts will die. But I, this this is a blessing in disguise for Red, because he's going to know his opponent's making stable units. So, Hurts, obviously, you would have wanted the pikeman upgrade there, but now you're just like, oh, well, this is kind of good for us, because we have the barracks prepared. Almost every unit in this game is countered by more units. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true to an extent. Numbers matter. Upgrades matter as well, right? And then, like, Damage per second. All, there's a lot of different factors that sometimes aren't discussed, but... I think when you see your opponents on Pikemen, though, and your Franks, you probably want to start mining stone for cheap castles. And, oh god, Pikemen, you gotta be careful here. You almost let those knights into your base. I could see Red making the mistake again. Because Blue's just attacking the gate. Full upgrades! Yeah, like, the knights are gonna destroy the Pikes, unless there's high numbers of Pikes. And remember, the beauty of a pikeman is that it doesn't cost gold, right? So it's it's cost effective. Still loses a 1v1 to a knight. Oh, God. This, this gate's going to open. Actually, I mean, the gate will go down pretty quickly as well. I think you have to wait if you're red until you have as many numbers as possible, as many upgrades as possible. I like this. Double blacksmith! An underrated play. Even high-level players don't do that enough. Make two of them. You have the wood. That way you don't need to wait for some of these upgrades. No, 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 no. Wait for the upgrades to complete. Wait, just wait. 
You're freaking me out, man. You're freaking me out. Oh, God. Okay, is he gonna do it? I don't know. Is he? Yes? Maybe? Yes, for sure. He's fighting. Now, the fact that half the knights are attacking the gate is pretty good for red. Armor kicks. Attack kicks in. That's not a bad fight. That's not a bad fight at all. Could it have been better? And could it have been a full clear up if he waited an extra five seconds? Sure. But this is still a very effective fight because all the bonus damage. And all of a sudden, Blue's like, well, what in the world am I supposed to do in this game? All I do is make knights. I feel like there's a lot of Frank players out there who play this game just like this. They always play Franks. They always go knights. If that doesn't work, do they go for hand cannons or throwing axemen? Well, maybe as they gain experience, they realize those things are possible. But a lot of people, they like to go into a game with a certain strat in mind, and they don't like to deviate from that strat. If they had to deviate, they just resign and start again. Anyways. Again, Franks do have a fallback if they want to. And what what's... Can someone explain the score to me? Is that eco upgrades or something blue's just making more knights <laughs> blue is crazy <laughs> okay red's gonna repair the gate now sometimes they'll open the gate when they repair it okay oh it's locked so it couldn't open yeah the knights are gonna get through <laughs> Yeah, another villager repairing. Oh, nope, nope. Gate will stay up for now. Yeah, let's look at blue scouting. Blue scouting, red scouting. Yeah, so scouting, having fish. I think in general, red has more upgrades. So his research percentage is higher. <laughs> like, I know what I just said is true. That a lot of players simply just make knights and they don't make anything else. But still, like, at this point, I kind of expected blue to try going to stone. At the very least, this to drop a castle here. And red's going to even get fortified wall now. Red is scared of those knights. What in the world? <clears throat> I'm 1100 elo and I 100% go frank pick with straight calf. Every time I try to switch, I get rolled because my micro is based on speed. Gotcha. Well, don't lie to yourself too much, right? Like, if your micro is based on speed, that, that, that's good. But you could still switch into things in combination with the knights, right? Like, scorpions could be good, for example. I know they're slow, but you could still, like, use your mobility while having a main fight. But, I mean, certainly all the signs are there if you're in Blue's position. That cab is not going to work for you in the long run. This is kind of funny. This gate is being held open by the pikemen. More barracks. Another TC from Red. Fishing ships still have helped out with a lot of resources. Monk now moving out to get some relics. I like Red's plan. Hmm. Rams? <laughs> Dude, this is funny, man. I thought he was going to Scorpions. What a fool. <laughs> he wants to break through that freaking gate. He's thinking is probably just like someone in my chat here who says like, I, if I, if it's not Knights for me, I just lose the game. So I got to try and I got to break through this freaking wall. Okay. Imp could come in for red, by the way. Building is there in the castle, so that would allow you to go imp. Obviously, getting halb is just, it just ends this game. But I think with the potential he has with all the barracks, with pikemen, he should still win this game as well. This really just comes down to if blue can snowball and get the timing right, and that timing needs to be soon. Okay, blue does not see red's army there. Red will obviously see blue's army. And it looks like blue... Okay, now... <laughs> now he sees the army, which is kind of funny. They're looking at each other through the trees. There's a tower as well. That tower is because the lumberjacks were spotted. It does not range the villagers, though, without fletching. So I think with fletching or once a couple more trees are chopped, obviously it's going to be seen. And, okay, tower hits something. The pikemen were going to open the gate there. Let's see if red wants to take this fight. Red's going to leave. Blue sees this. Blue is actually pulling the knights this way because blue, he wants to take out the gate. Let's see how red fights this. Blue just engages. This is crazy. He just simply takes the fight. Now, a couple villagers in here can be helpful because the villagers will maybe get attacked by the pikes and distract them. And yet again, we see fully upgraded knights do beat pikemen. 
Don't tell me this is actually going to work. More pikemen are needed. More pikemen are on the way, but there's rams this time. I'm not sure what these four villagers are doing for blue. Blue doesn't have more knights in queue right now, so there's just 11 knights, some of which are weak. And, oh, blue wants to take the berries. Okay, well, wasn't really expecting the forward berry approach. I was more so expecting a forward castle, but this is Loewy the Legends, after all, where we can see everything, as the pikemen are here now to attack the rams, defend their walls, defend their honor. And blue could maybe win the fight again? Because, again, a lot of the pikes are attacking the rams. But I think Red's got enough pikes behind this where eventually straight pikeman just does it. Right? Surely. And, like, Blue isn't on gold anymore. He ran out of his gold pile. He's probably staring at this like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Red's on the way to Imp. And there has been zero deviation from the initial plan from Blue. Zero attempt. Some people will watch this and they'll be... Some people get frustrated with people who play like blue because they're like, it's a strategy game, right? Like, why are you not trying to adapt? Other people understand because they're like, well, adapting's hard, right? It is my strategy. I choose my strategy. Sometimes my strategy works. Sometimes my strategy doesn't work. The, the thing that's just crazy to me is how stubborn blue is with it. Right? Especially like right now, right? But I guess his, his rally point was probably set in the front. So his rally point was set there. He probably didn't realize those knights were going to their death. I see all sides of, of, of the equation, right? I kind of get all aspects of it. But what a great job here from Red to defend from it initially. He honestly had a disaster Dark Age, but it feels like his mid game is quite strong. Recognize that he maybe needs time. Time to get the relics. He's got two of them. Time to get the walls down, which he did in Feudal. And also could be a reason he picked... Celts in the first place like speedy infantry so speedy pikemen really good against a civilization like franks wouldn't surprise me at all if franks is still the most picked civilization at lower elo i actually have to look at the data on that because i see quite a bit of variety these days like franks magyars britons still seen a lot huns has actually seen a remarkable amount just because it's so familiar for people like people coming back to the game but okay, Blue, you're making archer ranges now, so thinking about a tech switch. But no upgrades are in for the range units, and your opponent's going to be in Imperial Age pretty soon. And I mean, look at the technologies here for Red. Sheesh, even Treadmill Crane to build faster? Let's go. I think it's an underrated tech, by the way. I think pro, pro players need to research it more. Um, Obviously, you don't prioritize it over a million other things, but if you're... Not researching anything else in your university, I think getting that is worth it. I feel like Turks are the most picked, to be honest, but I play a lot of Arena. Well, yeah, if you play a lot of Arena, they're going to be played a lot. Um, So I guess it is map dependent, but yeah, Turks are insanely strong in Arena. <laughs> Blue. Sitting here looking at his screen like crap. I think I've lost another one. We're on such a losing streak. What am I doing wrong? It, this night thing used to work. Halb is in now. We have Elite Woad Raider as well. Dang. And Red has no interest in really pushing out just yet. Red is still putting a lot of focus on getting upgrades before moving out. And you're not really under pressure here, are you? I think if Blue would have gone for the initial night rush... With a castle drop, by the way? I think Blue wins this game. What do you guys think? Blue just... Like, the thing you need to think about with Franks is not switching into archers. It's the cheap castles. And if you use the cheap castles as part of your push, the castle can take care of pikes. But then also, as someone just alluded to in chat, you can also make axemen. And even just five or six axemen in combination with your knights is super strong against the pikemen. But we're going to see crossbow now. And uh, you're sinking a lot of gold into the castle age. But I mean, you know, it's something. It's archers, which is good against pikes. Siege engineers from red? Man, this guy, I, I knew he was going to stonewall. I didn't realize he still wouldn't be attacking here. 
Every castle he's built has been with one vill, it feels like. <laughs> Takes his good old time here. Dang. Um. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. If blue doesn't get top-notch society points for that neat village, I don't know what does. The village is very nice. I agree with you. The houses around the farms. Most of the production buildings around the farms as well. We haven't appreciated this maybe as much as we should have. So, Blue, if you rewatch this, I apologize. Well played, Benny. I think Red's economy looks pretty cool as well, though. Like, all of his farms are one-layer farms. One layer around the production building, or not production building, one layer around the building, one layer, one layer, one layer, one layer. He never goes out past that. Even here, one mill, one farm. He's got his monastery in a good spot, monastery, university, in similar locations. It's not too bad. Red is a player who loves defense and it has been told by his mother, son, one more game. He said, Mom, are you sure? And she said, yes, no Black Forest this time. He said, fine, what about Arena? No Arena either, son. Play something else. So he said, okay, well, I can't do Black Forest. I'll do Coastal Forest. Aha! And I'll do what I would normally do on Black Forest, and I'll wall up. He doesn't want to do the dishes. I get it. But I think Red's ready now. We're going to have Wode Raiders. We're going to have Trebs. Um, and Wodes are really good against crossbows. Uh, Wodes aren't the... They don't have the most Pierce Armor ever. Compared to, you know, a Huskarl, for example. Or some other unique units that have... Infantry unique units that have higher Pierce Armor. But they're super fast, and they can close the distance, and they have a lot of attack. And also, these crossbowmen, they're crossbowmen. They're not Arbalest, so. Um, Red is, is hoping that maybe Blue has been lured into a false sense of security here after that fight. And is ready to make a move. By the way, little side note. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to let you guys hear this. I We have two cats, right? And I've told you guys about my cats many times before. Um, our two-year-old cat now, she's not really a kitten anymore, which is kind of sad. They grow up so fast. But anyways, she does this thing where after she eats, she wants to tell me about it. Does anyone else have a pet that's like this? Like, our dog growing up was kind of like, oh, I just ate. Let's play or let's, let's cuddle with you or something. But I'd never had a cat that would eat and then just meow. Like, meow, meow, and, and tell me how her meal was. Is that a thing for anyone else's pets? Anyways, she's right outside my door right now. They're on timed feeders. And she's getting really obnoxious. I guess, do I need to go out there and acknowledge the fact that she's speaking to me? My cat comes to thank me? Yeah, but we don't, like, actively feed them. I mean, we do on occasion. We've got treats and whatever else. Uh, we occasionally give them wet food. But no, it's just the timed feeder. So it's not actually me doing anything. This is also the same cat that just goes up to strangers and wants attention. And um, like anytime we have someone, we've had someone come to our house to work on something. The guy had to tell me, ask me to move the cat because at first he was like, your cat's really cute and really enjoyed her. And then she just kept hopping up on the shelves and getting in his way. So she's just, she's very social cat. Our cat always came home from being outside and came in meowing, telling what he did. Okay, that's cool. Red's like, we've got 200 population space. We are going to use it. And Blue says, I've got maybe one more chance at this. Let's let's kill this pikeman player. I've got crossbows now. So here we go. Trying to ram this freaking wall time and time again. The crossbows are looking good so far. Right? The crossbows are doing a pretty good job of killing helps. And now the knights come in as well, so the knights have a little bit more freedom. But now we have the Wodies. And these Wode Raiders are going to wreck. Oh, Pogo! Celts, baby! Celts! They might not have the infantry speed in Dark Age anymore, but they've got that speed and they've got that strength in Imp. And woo! Ay, ay, ay. What a mop up. And Blue's been pretty stubborn in this game. There's been a lot that has gone wrong for Blue, and Blue has just stayed in the game. I respect you for that, Benny, but, um... 
I don't know about this one, dude. I don't know if you have any chance here. <laughs> I think Blue doesn't really know what hit him right now. Uh, and Blue calls the GG. Respect to Blue for the GG. Obviously, could be a frustrating loss. Always like to see the GGs. And Red gives the GG back. Uh, we still haven't seen Blue resign. Probably trying to find that in the menu. Maybe he forgot. But he does tap out eventually. And the tale of this game is pretty simple. I had said it before, but I'll say it again. Red is a player who kind of struggled in Dark Age and early Feudal. Didn't ever fall into a spot where it looked like Red could do a lot at that stage. But what Red added in was walls. And the walls gave Red time to get the economy right, get to 43 on food, at get the production buildings, and then Red was in a good position to defend. Your most important resource in Age of Empires 2 is actually time. Timing is everything. Knights can dominate, scouts can dominate, but if you can't get in the right time, they switch to halbs, and suddenly your strategy is not looking too good. It was a, overall a pretty good, good game. It looked lopsided, but in reality, if there's never stone walls from red, red never gets this economy, and blue probably destroys. Blue's probably used to doing that. And I'll be honest, I initially had joined this game. Maybe this is mean of me, but I initially joined this game because I was thinking that Red's name could be rather ironic. I said that I feel like the type of person who does cry when <laughs> happens would be someone who would name themselves Red's name. Um, and uh, Red was very respectful. <laughs> Red was very respectful. Called the GG and everything. So uh, pretty... Interesting game there. But yeah, good to see Celts picked. I know Franks get picked a lot. Uh, kind of curious out there who what civilization people are running into these days because I don't think Franks are picked as much percentage-wise as they used to. Uh, so maybe if you watch this video later on, you can let me know. But um, it was a good one, guys. It was a good one. Not bad.